Hello everyone. Welcome back to Aden Professionals. Uh, the last video we started looking at uh, the third principle on uh, relevant learning activities and resources. And uh, today I want us to continue that conversation. So we started on uh, planning for a session and we looked at different uh, requirements that we need. One was a training plan. And today I want us to focus on what a training plan is. So a training plan uh, also is known as a learning plan. And formerly it was called uh, schemes of work. But with the images of cement approach, it's called a training plan or a learning plan. So this is a tool that is uh, developed by trainers uh, with the individual learner in mind. Remember we talked about uh, CBET foca uh, focusing on the individual needs of the learner. And therefore when you're developing these uh, training plans, then you need to focus uh, on the individual uh, abilities of that learner and the needs. And the major purpose of a training plan is to enhance uh, a learning relationship between the trainer and the trainee so as to meet uh, the learner's individual learning needs. So basically, when you're developing that tool, you really need to focus on individual learners. Because learners in class have different uh, dynamics. So there is what we call variability of learners. Each learner is unique and therefore they have uh, different uh, learning styles and preferences. And therefore when you're developing this tool, it will enhance that relationship that really needs to come out between the trainee and the trainer. And they usually are uh, basically developed from uh, professional standards. Uh, and when you talk about occupational standard, uh, the industry defined uh, descriptions of the skills and knowledge that workers need to be successful in their jobs. So when you're developing this plan or learning plan, basically our major tool is the occupational standard, of course, corresponding curriculums. And we're going to see how we do that. So when you're developing a training plan, there are certain requirements you need to have with you. One is you need to have a proof timetable with proper location. So you need to have the right units uh, for training. And that table, the timetable needs to be approved as always the norm. A timetable will tell you the specific units, which class, which room, and at what time is that unit going to be delivered. And you'll see the essence of having a timetable. Another requirement that you need to have is the, the institution terms calendar of activities, which is a very, very important document because it affects your planning. So calendar of activities usually captures the number of weeks that you need to train for that term. It also focuses on their holidays if there are special activities within the institution that is going to affect teaching and learning could be graduation or any other activity. When are you going to do cuts in which week? So that is outlined uh, in the terms calendar of activity and it's a very important that you have that copy. Another requirement is uh, approved occupational standards. And that means it has been procured from Tibet CEDAC and uh, it has been approved 
of course by CEDAC and stamped by the institution as a true copy of, uh, of that occupation. Of, of course, you also need to have approved curriculum. And you're going to see its importance. You also need to understand your class size. And the basis of understanding uh, your class size is uh, it's going to affect your trainer, uh, your training activities. So those activities or learner active uh, strategies that you're going to employ or planning to employ in class is going to be affected by the class size. And therefore, understanding your number of learners in your class is very, very important. And the, the last is to have a list of references. And of course, it's good to always able to reference your sessions, either using books, uh, reading materials, journals, and of course your occupational standard and curriculum, those falls under uh, references. So this is a template of uh, a training plan. So there is no specific uh, template that you can use. So you need to develop as per your institution. So basically, it covers the unit of competency, the unit code, or the name of uh, the trainer, so that is you. Uh, the level, so this is the KNQA level, then your institution name. I've seen some templates that have um, a header, usually the logo of that institution. Again, you need to put your name of the institution. Date of preparation. When, the, when was this training plan developed? Date of revision. Because this is a document that is uh, need to be reviewed almost every time and then. So when did you do the reviews? So again, you need to capture that date. The number of learners. And you have talked about this essence why you need to capture that. The class code and the this portion of the skill or job task so you're going to see where you get this and of course uh, benchmark or criteria to be used again you're going to see it practically in the same part you also have the week uh, the session number formerly it was called period number uh, you also have the session title so this is your lesson title, the learning outcomes, usually uh, preferred to be at least minimum of three, could be more, but it's good to understand the more learning outcomes you have, the more train activities, the more training activities that you have. Uh, you also have uh, resources and references, we talked about the importance of identifying uh, resources and what affects uh, your choice of your resources and probably your learning outcomes. Uh, the learning checks and assessments. So these are very key important for CBET sessions. You need to be, during session, able to assess the learning outcomes. And then uh, reflections and dates. And again, we'll focus on another principle called reflection. But basically, this means you need to reflect, assess if your objectives were met or achieved. So basically, this is the training plan template that we're going to use now to populate one of the unit of competency. So let's dive to it. So this is the learning plan template that we've just looked at. And on my right, I have the OS on one of the unit of competency, demonstrate occupational safety and health. So let's see how we populate uh, our learning plan from this unit of competency. So unit of competency is, uh, so if you have a soft copy, just copy paste. Uh, 
uh, unit code. So you pick from there. Name of the trainer. So you put your name. Uh, level. So these are KNQA level 6. So you usually find it on the cover page of the OS or the curriculum. So you put your institutional name there. Uh, date of preparation. So I want to assume that you are making it today. Again, there is no uh, proper standard of writing the dates. So you can use any method. Date of revision, uh, for now, leave it uh, blank. But again, it's important that you review your learning plans every day, now and then. So that day, you, you review your document, you enter that date. Uh, number of learners, as we talked about, is very important. And the class is a class code. So mine is uh, DMET 23S. Skill or job, where do we get these in uh, occupational standard? Usually you find it in the unit description. So these units specify the competency required to lead the implementation of workplace safety and health programs, procedures and policies. So the skill here is where the verb starts. So it's to lead the implementation. So this is what you pick. Put it in the right place. A benchmark or criteria to be used. So these are the elements and performance criteria in the OS. So for now we're going to populate for one element. So I'm going to pick that. A bit there. And uh, each element is corresponds to its performance criteria. So you pick all the PC. So you have it all there. So you have now uh, inputted uh, all the benchmarks or criteria to be used. So let's go to the other component. And that is uh, week, session number, session title, learning outcome, train activities, uh, trainee activities, resources, learning checks and assessments. It's very key. And this you can do in between your sessions or after the sessions and how you want to achieve that assessment. And then reflections and dates. Of course, they are training aid under resources and assessment, I mean, assignment under training activity. So I want to assume this is uh, week one. And my session is usually the period number. And that depends with the individual institution. So in our case, mine is two sessions. So I'll do one, two. And then uh, session title. So what guides the session title is your curriculum. So you go to curriculum, and this is what I have for that unit of, uh, of learning, occupational safety and health, under content. And remember we said content is the PC, uh, identification of hazard in workplace. So I just pick the keyword and just say hazard. So hazard and risk indicators in one place. So learning outcome. Where do we get these learning outcomes? Of course, from your curriculum. But again, it's not there. So you need to develop uh, smart learning outcomes. Remember that acronym, SMART Learning Outcomes. So, 
since it's my first time in the class, so I want them to be able to explain the meaning. Mm. Explain the meaning of um, OSH terminologies. But again, you realize this is uh, not measurable. So explain meaning of at least 60% OSH terminologies, at least measurable. Then another learning uh, outcome is uh, identify Um, so identify workplace hazard and risk indicators. So the minimum required depends on uh, your curriculum, but again, at least uh, minimum of three. So let's have that too. For training activities, again, you'll be guided by your objective. So basically, this is about uh, the knowledge based kind of a uh, learning outcome. And therefore, I'll want to pose a question. This question. Uh, I'm going to pose a question. And then for this one, for the second uh, learning outcome, uh, please a video. I'm going to play a video sh uh, showing uh, different types of Harvard in one place. Of course, each learning outcome can have different, uh, as many uh, activities as you wish. The main essence is you're able to achieve this learning outcome. So as a trainer activity, you always find that a trainee also does some other things. So in this case, if I'm posing questions, then uh, what will be the trainee be doing? Yeah. So in this case, uh, I'll want the uh, trainee activity to be so through crowdsourcing. response so uh, through crowdsourcing the learner will give a response to the question post then for this one um, uh, as I play the video clips the trainee will be watching, so watch and the video clip. Of course, you can add others. Uh, sources and reference. So one of your references will be OS. So you write it in full. I just write OS course curriculum. That lists one. Uh, can have other materials. So if it is a book, I'm sure it is written uh, using APA 7th edition. 
this case have uh, one book so this is occupational safety Share there to the APA guidelines. Of course, our training dates will be determined by your activities. So, in this case, uh, only have video. So, I have video. case there is a link you put the link there then uh, learning checks and assessment this one will be guided by suggested uh, assessment method in the curriculum so in this case you'll be guided by again your objectives or sorry learning outcomes so in this case explain I want to assess through oral questions For identification, probably I want to observe and look at observation. And then uh, your reflection is very important at the end of the lesson if your objectives were met. So you write objective uh, achieved on this date. If there's any assignment, this is where you post. So in my case, I'll say describe biological hazards. So if it is a graded assignment, you put the marks. If it is not, you leave it out. So basically, uh, you have populated a uh, a learning plan for one of the unit of uh, competencies and uh, you do that for all units of competencies or rather all the elements or learning outcomes so this is how we do it and you can do it for depending on the number of weeks for that term So that's how uh, you're able to populate our learning outcome. And I believe uh, we are learning something. And for those uh, who have subscribed, thank you for support. So this marks uh, the end of uh, developing training plan. In our next video, we'll be looking at now using our training plan how do you able to develop session plans? Thank you.